we will continue our uh, study of problem decomposition by recursion and if we recall that we had decided that our problem will be written in a recursive manner by a principle in which we have got two parts the base condition and the inductive conditions. The base condition specifies what will happen on the boundaries of the recursion and the inductive condition specifies the problem decomposition. And in the problem uh, uh, recursive part we had two aspects of it. One was the decomposition part of the problem, the other was the recomposition part of the problem and together they form what is a well known technique is computer in computer science and is called the divide and conquer principle. And we saw several uh, simple examples informally of how to do it. We will just quickly go back to a more reasonably written version of those examples. The first was the simplest one in which we had the factorial program where the base condition was when n is equal to 1, the value is 1. Otherwise, this was the decomposition fact of n minus 1 and the recomposition was n into the return value of the factorial. So, this was the decomposition and this was the recomposition part of the problem. Next, we tackle the Fibonacci numbers and in the Fibonacci series we saw there are two base conditions when n is it was called with fib n and when n is 0 the value is 0 when n is 1 the value is 1 and these two together form the base conditions. And a, unlike in the factorial where there was only one sub problem to be solved in the decomposition here we had two sub problems fib n minus 1 which we called recursively and fib n minus 2 which we called recursively. We got back the two solutions and we recomposed it by adding the two of them and this is what we returned as the value in val. Then we saw the tower of Hanoi's problem which when written down had got n disks on three pegs and they were called from, to and via and to solve the towers problem you had to transfer these n disks from this peg to this peg using this peg and these are the three parameters which are character inputs in our case and n is an integer. But what does it return? It returns a list, it returns a sequence. So, it returns a sequence of numbers of moves and a move was represented by a tuple of the form and say two moves were represented like this. So, this was the sequence of moves which we used to represent the solution. So, what it must return is a list unlike in the previous two cases which was an integer and let us remember that list is no de defined data type in a language like C. But when we design the problem we design it using our own mental structures and as we know it is it is a sequence of tuples or we, we call it a list of tuples. And the base condition was when n was 1 L which is the returned list is only one element called from to 2. And the inductive conditions were when n was greater than 1. And there we broke it up into three sub problems. First we said that n minus 1 from this peg we will move it to the via peg using the 2 peg. Then we will move one disk from the from peg to the 2 peg using the via peg and then we will move the n minus 1 disks back we had moved it to the via peg we will move it from the via peg and we are required to move it to the 2 peg from the from peg and we will get for this we will get a set of solutions, for this we will get a set of solutions and for this we will get a set of solutions. And the final solution will be an appending of these three lists 
to form your list L and this is the recomposition of the solution and we return L either computed here or computed here. Is that okay? So, this is now we have written it down in a much more organized fashion. The next was the merge sort, the split sort. Here again the input L is a list of integers, what is returned is another list of integers and we have got the basis condition when n is equal to 1, the returned list is the same as the original list. That is when one element is there, it is already sorted. In the inductive condition, we split L into two non-empty lists L1 and L2 and we recursively merge sorted L1 to get L1 dashed as a returned sorted list of L1. We recursively sorted L2 to get a sorted list L2 dashed and we defined what was a combined routine which could combine two sorted lists to form a complete sorted list and let us now call it the routine merge because this is what it is traditionally called. So, these were the decomposition steps splitting and recursively merge sorting and then the recomposition of the solutions by the function merge and the list L dashed is returned. Is that okay? The other version which we called quick sort, which was a slightly different variation, here again the input is a list of integers, the output is a list of integers. n is the size of L, if n is equal to 1, the base condition is same. Otherwise, we selected out one element of L and we created two lists. One is L1, which puts into L, which puts into L1 all elements from L which are greater than or equal to x. This is what split G e does. Split L t does what? It creates, it returns a list L2 which taking the list L and the element x returns all elements which are less than L x. And then we recursively, we quick sort L1 by the same algorithm, we could have used merge sort here also, any sorting routine, but we will recursively use quick sort, we are doing problem decomposition and L2 to get L2 dashed, L1 to get L1 dashed and now these are sorted, both are sorted and they are placed such a way that if we want to put them in ascending order, we have to just put L1 first and L2 second. So, we append or concatenate L1 dashed and L2 dashed and recompose the solution. So, this is the approach that we used. We have just written them down in a more organized step by step fashion. So, here again we have the decomposition steps and the recomposition step. Now, what is left? Is this the end of our programming? So, the next thing we have to answer is how to convert these definitions to programs. And before deciding on this, we have to answer several issues. The first is, before converting to programs, we have to answer several questions. The first question is, what do we do with the data structures? Whenever there is integer, etcetera, there is no problem. But if we end up with things like list, we have to implement this list. With integers and characters and an array, how will we implement a list is something we have to answer or will we do it in some other way. We have to return a list of what? A list of pairs of elements. How will we logically pair up these elements? So, how will we write out our program for describing these lists. Here we have just informally written them down. So, we have to write down, we have to organize our data in form of higher level structures than pure integers or characters or arrays as they are given. So, this is a part of data structuring, the simplest data structuring which we shall have to address. 
the second question which we will have to answer so first is directly how do we convert it to programs so we will have to answer this question and we will see what we will do at each and every place second is what do we do at choice points now let us see what choice points we had split a list into two non empty lists l1 and l2 where do we split the list half half one third two third or all are equal or anything does it make any difference we have got a choice of splitting here what do we do does it make have any effect we have a choice of selecting an element l here which element do we select does it make any difference to the final algorithm if we select this element so we have to answer these questions we can do it arbitrarily but as we saw in our example of max and min and max and second max a deeper analysis really helps to get a better understanding of the solution so we have to answer what we do at choice points and in order to answer that this is what we have to do we have to analyze this initial definition as we call it and do a complexity analysis complexity means how much time will an algorithm take if we take this choice point if we take that choice point if we use this data structure for a list if we use that data structure for a list what what are we going to do so we unless we do this we are never going to reach our uh, our required goal of getting the best possible solution and only what after we have done this we have made two things we have been able to choose the final algorithm by choosing what we do at various choice points and we will be able to design our final data structures how do we implement that list how do we implement uh, those elements from and to those pairs which is the best way to design them so after having come up to this point we are ready to design the final algorithm and the final data structure it is at this point that we turn to writing out the final program it's a long way to go till we proceed to do this and we have not yet learnt many things to proceed even beyond this point so with the possible knowledge that we have at present of arrays and other things only integers and arrays we'll see how we can convert these definitions to programs at the level that we are in and once we have got an initial working program which is correct then we will go step by step to understand what we have to do here what mathematics is involved to do this complexity analysis but before that we have to learn some more of programming so today we will quickly see how we can convert these definitions to programs with whatever knowledge we have and then we will see what other knowledge we require to see other avenues and that's what we will study in the subsequent classes so today we will just quickly go back and see the programs that we had the factorial one is obvious so we'll just pick the fibonacci number which is equally obvious if you have to directly convert it to a program there's nothing you can just simply write this down in c language and you'll get a working program because this is going to return an integer and whatever we have in our knowledge we can simply convert it into a program there's nothing to do we can directly convert it into a program we are not analyzing the program to see whether this is the best possible whether there are any choices we have that we'll come to later but today we'll just see how to just directly convert it to a program and this one is obvious so we'll see a slightly different variation of this so here is the fibonacci program we have the main program is this visible so we have the main program and in the main program we just read in n and in the printf function itself we call fibn 
that is possible in C. And this is the Fib n uh, program where Fib m actually this is the parameter base condition if m equal to 0 return 0 else if m equal to 1 return 1 else return I have just written out a more uh, compact program just to show you uh, the way it can be written in C Fib m minus 1 plus Fib m minus 2. So, this will give you a solution even if you had written Fib m minus 2 plus Fib m minus 1 even that would have given you the solution both are equivalent. So, you could have this will return you Fib m minus 1 plus Fib m minus 2 in a return statement you can put in an expression and if so if you just uh, run this It does not ask for n. So, Fib 5 is 5, Fib 6 is 8. So, whatever you do, you will get it. Just a point which I wish to mention here is that if I replaced this by 2 and this by 1, even that would have been correct. It does not matter if I do Fib n minus 2 first and then m minus 1 second because both are independent sub problems this will return one solution this will return another solution and the solutions will get added. This is because addition is a commutative operation because addition is commutative you can do any one of them in any order. So, if I do it in any order also I will still get the correct solution. <coughs> so, that is fine. So, I think that is quite uh, easy to understand. Uh, if we do this uh, Fibonacci problem. So, let us come to the Tower of Hanois problem. The first problem that we encounter here is a list. We have to return a list of elements. We still do not know how to return a list of elements unless we declare an array. We, de we can declare an array for the solution and this can return an array. All right, but do you know the size of the array that you have to declare? What is the solution if for tower of Hanois of n the total number of moves is so the the size of the array that you have to declare is exponential to n. Anyway, you can declare an array and put the solution and return an array. And I leave you to you to decide to find out in C language how you declare an array to be returned from a function. And then you can declare three arrays and based on these three arrays you can write an append program to combine three arrays into another array. All right. Now, if you implement it using arrays, <coughs> one very interesting point like in the Fibonacci numbers if I did this one first or this one second it does not matter. If I take back the solution and I do L 1, L 2, L 3 does it matter if I do this one first, this one if I write it down in another order I have to just do this append in the proper order. If I do the append in the proper order I am going to get the solution is that okay? Now, I will just take a different approach to using a list. What I will do is instead of using a list I will just print the solution. If I have I will not return anything tower of Hanoi here if n is equal to 1 it will just print from 2. I do not want to use an array of such a huge size I just want the result to come on the screen. So, if n is equal to 1 it instead of l is equal to this it will just print from 2. Otherwise it will recursively call this one, recursively call this one and recursively call this one. This append is no longer required because the solutions are printed from inside. But once I do that it becomes very important to write these three in proper order because if I write them in reverse order then since the append function is not there 
and printing is done inside the routine, it will work out in the order in which I ask it, I give it to the recursion. Is that okay? So, if I have to just simply print it, then I will call this, call this and call this. And instead of this append, I will have nothing and instead of this, I will just have a print and that will solve my problem. We will go back to using a list when we see is this the best way to solve this problem or not. When we have to answer this question, we will come back and see something else. But now, whatever uh, knowledge we have at our disposal, we will just use it to write a program which works. So, let us see how that program will look like. The main program is here n, it reads in n and calls tower n, a, b and c. And this one is the towers routine, which takes in an m as an integer and three arguments as I mentioned before and we have declared them to be characters, because if you will notice I have called them with characters a, b and c. We are introducing characters possibly for the first time in this course, but I think this part is quite uh, clear and obvious. So, we can declare characters by the word char and these are all single characters. From is one character, to is one character and via is one character. And if m is equal to 1, what did we say? We will write a print. Print f move from percentage c is the format to write a character. So, move from percentage c to percentage c and the first one is the from and the second one is the to or else call towers recursively from via and to and this one you could have called it with m equal to 1, but I have just uh, written out the m equal to 1 case specifically here again. I have just repeated this statement here instead of calling m equal to 1 which is the same thing and here I have called towers via to and from. So, this is the recursive uh, direct recursive version of the towers of Hanoi, where the list input is not taken and we just print the output and we have to be very careful, so that we do it in this particular order, because if we do it in any other order, we will get the problem solved in a different order, because recursion will first do this, then do this and then do this and inside it the printing will take place. So, suppose you give 1, you get this, you give 2, a to c, a to b, c to b, you give 3, you will get the 7 moves and similarly, if you give 4, you will get all the moves. So, let us quickly go back and see that doing it this way really gives the solution instead of writing out lists and all that. Do I need to go through the recursion once or is it okay? okay. So, what did we have? We called it with 3 A B C and the recursive program, I will use this to highlight the recursion. We first call tower n minus 1 from via 2, then we print it and then we do this and in the base part we directly print it. So, let us see how it works if we do it that way exactly how the program executes. So, first this part will get called 2 a to c to using b. So, the call will get transferred here. So, this will again start executing. So, this starts executing 
it is not that independently these are three called so this starts executing as recursion goes so one a b c from to via so the first call is from via to and this starts executing now this is a base condition and what happens we are supposed to return this instead of that we are printing this so first we print a b this gets printed remember this was going to be appended in the beginning of the list because this was going to get appended then something then something that was going to come back here and so this would have come in the beginning of the list and this is going to get printed first then so once this completes the second part of this executes which in our program instead of calling one this this we simply printed ac remember if we called it recursively also ac would have been returned and ab would have been the first element here ac second this would have come back here and ac would have been the second element in the solution and ac is going to get printed now thirdly we going to call one c uh, sorry b b to c using a this is what is going to happen via to from the second recursion is via to from via to from this is from this is to this is via so via to from so after the control initially it came here then it came here then it came here then it came here and so what will now get printed because this is a base condition b c and then control will go back this part is done fully goes back here and the next sub problem is generated which in our case is 1 a b c which is print a b then this part goes back control goes back to this side and the new sub problem that is generated is to via to and from <coughs> this is a inductive condition so you get a recursion call is made One, C, A, B. You are here, so the control now comes here. This is a base condition. This gets printed. So, then control goes back, and the next sub problem gets generated. C, B gets printed because one from two. so c b gets printed so this part control goes back here and the last sub problem for this which is 1 via 2 from and this is generated this is a base sub problem so this gets printed this completes control goes back here this completes control goes back here this completes control goes out and you've got your solution so this is how we have used recursion to solve this problem where the list instead of the list we simply printed the solution out all right so control over recursion is very important you must understand exactly how recursion works in order to convert your problem into recursion on the other hand if you had used arrays it wouldn't have mattered in which order you solved them 
but it, it matters how you recompose them. The recursion that we have implemented, here only the recomposition automatically takes place by printing. So we have used recursion to solve the problem not only of decomposition, but also formation of the solution with our knowledge of recursion. So problem decomposition and recursion in programming are not identical. You have to be careful and you have to use recursion to solve your problem. Therefore, the towers of Hanoi solution which we showed in the computer just now is a method by which we use recursion to solve our problem. We are out of time today. So, we will just see how quickly in the next class how we will solve the merge sort and the quick sort problems, how we will implement the list and then we will have a discussion as to what we can do about this. So, we are now trying to get some initial solutions and once we are able to do that, we will understand what we lack in terms of programming uh, facilities and we will acquire them quickly, how to form a list, how to form structures of elements and then we will be able to solve these problems and analyze them better.